Well, good morning. Let's stand and sing. Thanks for being here this morning. Beautiful morning out there. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I would open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands. For I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love. Let's do that again. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I would open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands. For I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love. Sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. Oh, I feel like dancing. It's foolish I know. But when this world has seen the light, they will dance with joy like we're dancing now. Sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. From the top, let's praise him for his creation. Let's praise him for his love. Thank you, Jesus. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. 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 Oh, I feel like dancing. It's foolishness, I know. But when this world has seen the light, they will dance with joy like we're dancing now. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love Sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Good morning, and you may be seated. Welcome, everyone. And for those of you who are joining us online, thanks for tuning in this morning to Living Well Church here in Dixon. Beautiful Dixon, Illinois. Oh, it's good to be back. We, uh, our family and I went to Des Moines, Iowa for our celebration of life. It was a quick trip and I uh, got back last night about seven and uh, it's good to be home. We uh, 
We did notice that it was a little greener over there. I don't know why. Maybe it's just a little bit south, kind of along I-80. It's a little greener down where you're at, Ella, than it is up here, or better even better in Peoria oh yeah lots going on but it uh, it certainly was a beautiful drive and it's good to be back a few announcements I'd like to share today all right we are continuing in our sermon series bridge, uh, bridge builders today and today we're going to be talking about the passage in scripture uh, where Jesus talks to the lawyer and this is not a setup for a joke, but uh, he talks to a lawyer. The lawyer asks him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus begins to open up a story, and it, uh, it's all about helping others. And it's set in the context of a good Samaritan who helps a weary traveler. So we're going to be talking about that this morning. Uh, April, 9th, or April 18th, which is Thursday right? Thursday? Yep. We are excited to participate with uh, the Dixon downtown. They have an event and we're a part of it called Ladies Night Out and you'll start to see signs, signage coming up here. I saw some vinyl, vinyl uh, signage coming in. Do I need to change my mic battery? No? Okay. All right. And if you uh, would like to uh, be a part of that, you're sure welcome to come and uh, be a part of that. I believe it's from 3 until 8. Yep. And so we're going to be uh, uh, securing usage. I think we're going to buy it of a giant Jenga set. It's going to be set over here uh, near the window. And I guess this thing is like, uh, you know, you, you remember the, the little regular Jengas, you know, you pull the piece out and set it on top. These are I guess this one can be as as big as five feet tall, so it's it's uh, kind of for a yard game. But uh, we're going to bring it inside; it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, movie and munchies uh, the following night on April nineteenth, so that'll be Friday night. Hope that you can come on out at six p.m. Where we uh, are still deciding on a movie. Got some good options, and uh, but it'll be fun to come together and enjoy a movie together, bring some munchies, that'll be good. Ladies Coffee and Conversation, April 20th, on um, right here at 9 a.m. here in the Living Well Community Room. And then uh, we'll also be having a first Sunday lunch on May 5th. That'll be taking place right after the service. I love that idea. Uh, it, uh, it solves the lunch problem for the day, but uh, most importantly, it's certainly great to be together and get to eat each other's food. That's, that makes it great. Uh, Northwest Illinois District Assembly is April 26th and 27th at our Ottawa Church, which is Crossbridge Church of the Nazarene, right to the north of the interstate there as you're driving uh, on Interstate 80. Yeah, that's 80. Uh, right through there. So April 26th in the evening, that's a Friday night, and then the 27th. Uh, and it'll be over probably by uh, 1230 uh, that early afternoon on Saturday. So hope you can attend. It's uh, close enough to us that we really don't have to have a motel, but um, some of us have secured a motel so that we can be there. Uh, and then uh, let's see, Grill Out, May 11th, and that'll be at the White Pines. Probably bring the giant Jenga set for that. Uh, Saturday, May 11th from 1 to 3. We do not yet have a pavilion uh, staked out, but it'll probably be toward the back of the park, across both uh, fords, and you'll find us back in there. All right. If you would like to give in the offering this morning, there is a basket uh, for those of us here in the house on the corner of the tech table. And for those of you online, there is a portal on our website that you are free to give there. And uh, we recognize that as just a way to say I love you to God uh, for his uh, salvation, for who he is. And we 
around here we believe that giving is a form of worship. Amen. And uh, it's just one way that we can say thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done in our lives. All right, let's pray, and we'll continue to praise his name. Lord, we thank you today. Thank you that we can be together in this place. And Lord, may we raise our voices in praise to you. Father, may we lift our hearts in praise. You are worthy of all of our adoration, worship. You are worthy of our full attention this morning. And Lord, we just believe that every time we look into your word, there's going to be a new, a new revelation for us, a new, a new way for us to see your will for our lives, a new way to act out, a new way to obey. So Lord, I pray today that you would help us to see our part in fulfilling the great commission that you've given us as Christians and all of us as churches gather together, Lord, to be a part of doing your work here in the world. Lead us now, Lord, in faith and obedience, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together.
need Him not only for salvation, but we need Him to love the world through us. Amen. Let's look at James chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. It says, Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Lord, we need you to teach us every day because self continues to rise up. And we need you, Lord, to remind us of the importance of the crucifixion of the sinful nature. And it's something, Lord, that prayerfully we must do every day as we see the world, Lord, through our own eyes or through yours. Father, help us, I pray, to see the world as you see it. And we know that there's only one way that that is even possible, and that is for us to say yes to you, Lord, and allow you, once again, your Holy Spirit in his fullness into our lives. So, Lord, we, as the Apostle Paul said, crucify the sinful nature with its passions and desires so that you may be Lord of everything in our lives. Father, as we come to you, we place our trust in you that even after those parts of us that we enjoy or hold dear and near are placed on the cross. And say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Lead us now, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Come, every soul, by sin oppressed, there's mercy with the Lord. And He will surely give you rest by trusting in His Word. Only trust Him. Trust Him now, He will save you, He will save you, He will save you now. For Jesus shed His precious blood, rich blessings to be stored. Plunge now into the crimson blood that washes white as snow. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you. the truth, the way that leads you into rest. Believe in Him without delay, and you are fully blessed. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him. Trust him.
Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you, He will save you, He will save you now. I have a lot of favorite hymns, but this this ranks right up there as one of my favorites. First of all, I have pleasant memories of George Beverly Shea singing it at every Billy Graham crusade. And the flood of people that would come down from the tops of the stadiums and make their way down to the front, giving their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. But secondly, it is also um, it's a personal testimony. And um, it gives me a way to re-examine my heart. Am I still there? Does it still... Is that where I'm still living? So let's sing this beautiful hymn together. I'd rather have Jesus. <clears throat> I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by His nail-pierced hands than to be the King of a vast domain. Or be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today.
yes. I'd still rather have Jesus than anything. Ah. Hear the church bells. The story of the Good Samaritan is both inspiring and I suppose it has an element of tragedy in it. As we recall, and we'll read the story here in a minute from the gospel, the two individuals pass by a man who is in need, and uh, they happen to be religious people. And they, it, it seems like, at least from our perspective, they should have been the first to help, but instead... They went on their way. In fact, they went out of their way to get away. The only person to reach out their hand was a person who would have been unexpected to do so because he was a Samaritan. And Samaritans and Jews were divided in many ways, and we're not going to get into all of that this morning. But it happens to be that Jesus selects the hero of this story as someone who breaks barriers, as someone who's willing to extend a hand, as someone who's willing to extend themselves, both in time, money, risk, and in resources. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the amazing story that you've given us and the amazing tools you've given us to be bridge builders. Help us to use them for your glory. Lord, bring reconciliation and redemption in our lives and help us help others find reconciliation and redemption in their lives too. And Lord, between brothers and sisters, may we be bridge builders. And Lord, this passage is going to take us a little bit beyond that to um, be bridge builders with people who are racially different, who are culturally different, who worship at a different place, who have different priorities. Lord, help us, I pray, to be bridge builders as you have taught us in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week we kicked off our series on building bridges, and we talked about Jesus giving us the right blueprints, and I, um, I made it a special point for us to recognize last week, as rightfully so in Scripture, that it is God who sets the tone, amen, for how we are to live. It, it really has nothing to do with how we get kind of wonky in our lives with our perspective. It has to do with what does Jesus say and how are we to follow his example because we all know that life can get a little crazy and we can be uh, in positions of being hurt, being wounded, and uh, because of that, we can build, begin to build walls instead of bridges. And uh, I also made it a point, um, which is, I believe is a scriptural, that we have to be careful that we don't equate social justice with forgiveness. They are related, but they're not the same thing. And then we also need to make sure that we are not putting ourselves in a place, even though we forgive. Forgiveness does not necessarily mean putting ourselves in the same position to take advantage of that person's vulnerabilities. There may be, an, let's say there may be an abuser in a relationship. That person's default to dealing with chaos or stress or fear in that household is abuse. And we need to be careful that we're not, even though we forgive, 
we are not putting ourselves back in a position to press the, their default action. Part of what we do as bridge builders is help people see and find the truth of Jesus Christ. And it does take you and I, in order to build a bridge, it does take building on the footings that are solid, bedrock, and resting on the bedrock of Jesus. So we're going to look at the next step in the process today and make sure we have the right tools for this project of building bridges. During the American Revolution, a man in civilian clothes rode up past a group of soldiers repairing a small defensive barrier. Their leader was shouting instructions, but that's about what all he was doing. He was commanding his men to do this and do that, but was making no attempt to help them. Ask why by a rider, a rider came by dressed in civilian clothes and asked why he wasn't helping his soldiers. And he retorted with great dignity. He said, sir, I'm a corporal. The stranger apologized, dismounted and proceeded to help the exhausted soldiers. When the job was done, he turned to the corporal and said, Mr. Corporal, Next time you have a job like this to do and not enough men to do it, go to your commander-in-chief and I will come and help you again. <laughs> that was none other than George Washington. <laughs> there was a clear barrier between the commander-in-chief and those soldiers, but George Washington broke that barrier and bridged a gap. He built a bridge to support his fellow soldiers in their struggle. So let's turn to Luke chapter 10 this morning, Luke chapter 10, and uh, read a portion of the scripture today. Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. So, interesting conversation there. A lawyer presents himself to Jesus, and by the way, being a theocracy, uh, Israel was a theocracy, and uh, the law would have been the law of Moses, and all of the <laughs> all of the interpretation of that law, which in a form kind of became law, functioning part of the law, as they interpreted uh, the, the essence of the law. So as this lawyer came to Jesus, he was interested in what it was that he should do to inherit eternal life. And I couldn't help but once again, during small group, there was a reference, strong reference made to the importance of our obedience that words and love have a part, but there is a strong connection between love and follow-through, love and action, love and obedience to what God's will is for us. So he approaches Jesus, and the lawyer knows what the law says. He's an expert. So this question I... I'm sure, is actually testing Jesus. And I, I kind of wonder if this lawyer was trying to put Jesus in a box. You never want to try to be in that position, amen, because you're just not going to be able to do it. But I wonder if he was kind of like, I'm going to ask this question in front of all my friends so that I will be justified by this new rabbi. 
because obviously I have no fault. I have loved the Lord my God with all my heart, so you can see it by what I do. And so Jesus digs a little deeper, doesn't he? He, 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 makes, he makes this not essentially, not all about being able to quote the law, but rather he digs a little deeper and he gets right down in there and as he unfolds this story, he makes it pretty apparent that there is more to following God than knowing the law. There is an essential obedience part that Jesus shares with the man. It's a good question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, as Wesleyan believers, we also believe that we take counsel from the entire counsel of God, which means that we do not develop a theology on one particular parable of Jesus. It means that we take into account Jesus' full teaching, the full counsel of the Word of God. And so, as we look at this parable, you might uh, be asking the question, and it's a good question, does, it, does salvation happen because I do something? Well, that's, that's not the point of this parable. The point of this parable is the importance of doing. Not that doing will bring you eternal life, but that it is an important aspect of our faith. Amen. As James says, faith without works is dead. And by grace you have been saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we take counsel from the entire counsel of God, the Word of God, as we understand what it is to be saved. But the lawyer seems to be mistaken with the idea of what he needs to do to earn his way to heaven. And that's, although that's part of this parable, there is something more that Jesus wants to share. Even as an expert in the law, this lawyer is still mistaken about what it takes to have eternal life. And to just kind of bring it on down here, knowledge does not make us obedient. Just because we know the good to do doesn't make, it, doesn't make it that we have somehow fulfilled the requirement of the law. And that's probably drives more at the heart of what Jesus was trying to help this man with. Is that it's not enough that you, do, that you know the law and you are certainly an expert in the law. But I'm going to drill down a little bit and, and help you understand that there is an important obedient, obedience part to love. Jesus challenges this lawyer's knowledge with, well, he puts it right back to him. He says, what does the law state? And knowing that the lawyer knows what the law says, the lawyer responds correctly. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you've answered correctly. That's good. But like the story of George Washington, as Christians, we have a choice to make. We can be like the corporal who, because of our knowledge of Scripture and the perceived status that that brings, we can somehow see ourselves because of our knowledge, above the need to get down right in there and help somebody who has a need. We might even need to rethink the interactions of our lives this week and, and take note, did we, did we get down in there with people who were struggling or did we quote our Bible knowledge. And that's, I think, the point of this passage is that it's, 
This is more about knowing what to do and knowing the good answer. It's, it's about getting in there and offering a hand. Last week, we discussed the blueprints necessary for bridge building. And that's a great plan. It, it, it's what Jesus has for us. But it's also time for us to take action, all of us. And in the case of building a bridge, that means gathering the right tools. We, uh, we went to, uh, as I shared, we were on our way to Des Moines yesterday. Was that yesterday? No, Friday afternoon, and then we came back yesterday afternoon. And uh, there are some huge bridges being built and overpasses on uh, Route 80. And uh, there was one particular interstate exchange that they were building two or three levels of highway over Route 80. And Hannah and Hazley were especially amazed at all the cranes that were just in the air. And, of course, it being uh, Friday afternoon, some of the workers were still working, but then again on Saturday, everything was kind of just still. But the most impressive of the tools that we witnessed being used were the cranes. And I'd like us to think about Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, where we would say that passage is about the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. That just as a crane is able to take these huge pieces and gracefully put them in place under the guidance of a skilled operator, which is the Holy Spirit, amen. It's making, making it possible for us to place these huge pieces of steel, nudge them in place so beautifully. So is the Spirit's work in us. It's not that necessarily our goodness or our joy or our kindness or our faithfulness or our gentleness or our self-control are all that much in and of themselves. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, beautifully placing and gracefully placing those pieces into the lives of others as we build bridges, great work is done. Christian character is not mere moral or legal correctness, but possessing and living out these nine graces, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the tools for the foundation of our moral portrait of Christ. Now, most of you have been um, I've had the experience of building uh, kits. And Ikea has become this huge manufacturer or distributor of kits. And you can get everything from dressers to beds to uh, children's playhouses. And uh, it's interesting. I've never bought from Ikea, but I have bought playhouses. It was a couple years ago. Uh, we got uh, a, a doctor's office for the girls for Christmas. And I can remember you get this huge box in the mail, and it's, it's got a thousand pieces in it, and they give you an Allen wrench. <laughs> and everything you need to have done to, to, to turn all of those screws, to put all those pieces together, can be accomplished with this single Allen wrench. And it's true, you can do it. But you know, the first thing I did, I went down to the shop and I got a cordless screwdriver and I found a wrench that would fit in that. And boy, those screws zzz, 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 made quick work out of it. And that's the Holy Spirit, amen? 
as we have the right heart, the Holy Spirit empowers us through, he, through these beautiful character traits of love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, and self-control. He gives us the power to do effective work and very efficiently and beautifully. So it's important not only to have blueprints, which, as I stated before, it's the blueprint that makes the call on a job site. We go by the blueprint, and the blueprint is, are the words of Jesus on what it means to forgive and how important it is to forgive. And, and even though we may think at, at a time in our life that that, that just isn't going to work, to do it that way, you and I as followers of Christ have committed ourselves to follow the blueprint that Jesus has drawn for us on forgiveness, on reconciliation, on building bridges. So if you were to use the Allen wrench provided, it might take six to eight weeks <laughs> to build the play kitchen or the doctor's office or whatever. Uh, at some point, we all realize that um, it would just be better if we just asked the Holy Spirit to help us. Help us see this project, help us see this need with His love, and to ask Him to empower this situation with His love and His strength. The instructions alone don't get the job done. And insufficient tools will only make the project unendurably long. Sometimes you just simply need to grab a different, more powerful tool. And that's why we welcome the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. Let's look at John chapter 4, verse 35. It says, don't you have a saying, it's still four months until the harvest? I tell you, open up your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe unto harvest. As I think about all of the guys that come into my barbershop every month, God has given a, uh, a it, it's a great honor to be a part of their lives. I have men that tell me everything and men that don't tell me anything. But I feel like once every two weeks, once every three, four, five, six weeks, I get to meet with these guys and kind of see how things are going. And for a percentage of them, they it's an ongoing conversation on what's happening in their lives. And I ask the Lord every day to give me the right words to say. And in a lot of ways, I feel um, like I have the opportunity to be a bridge builder. Jesus says these fields are ripe for harvest. And you may be thinking, well, that only has to do with salvation. And I'm not seeing people saved every day. But it, I think it has more to, more to do with than only salvation. It has to do with helping people find the next step to know Jesus. And for some people, a steady, faithful relationship is a hint on what's possible to know with their Creator. There's opportunities around us every day. Let's continue on in our passage, Luke 10, verses 30 through 37. In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and when he, he was attacked by robbers, and they stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, 
he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite. When he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any expense you may have. And then Jesus turned to the man and said, Which of these do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? And the expert of the law replied, The one who had mercy on him. And Jesus said, Go and do likewise. When the lawyer heard about the priest and Levite, he probably expected Jesus to say next that a common Jewish man came and helped him. But then Jesus shocked this man by saying that someone who was a perceived antagonist or maybe even an enemy, a Samaritan, actually became the hero of this story. Generally speaking, Jews and Samaritans didn't get along. They were racially divided. They were religiously divided. The culture gave Samaritans plenty of reasons to hate Jewish men and pass them by. But instead of passing by, this Samaritan showed grace to the Jewish man. He didn't wait to be asked. He just went and did. The Samaritan not only gave this Jewish man, half beaten, half dead, on the road, his attention, he gave him his time, and he gave him resources. He took action. I think another couple tools that are in our toolbox to help build bridges are time and money. Sometimes we use them well, other times not so well. In the story of the Good Samaritan, neither the priest nor the Levite had the time. They might have had the money, we don't know. But they didn't take the time. They both had an amazing opportunity to help another human, but they walked right past. If they had stopped, we're not sure. Either of them would have had any excess money. We don't know. But the Samaritan shows what can be done with a good, earnest heart, a little extra time, and a little extra money, he was able to help the half-dead traveler. And I wonder, are there any opportunities that you and I are missing out on? Is it a matter of time? Is it a matter of finances, a matter of ability? Something else? I wonder, in the, as we all seek to prioritize our lives with what all we have going on, I wonder if we can give God permission as we a- ask Him, is this, a, is this a, a moment that you would have me reprioritize for just a little bit? Resources and time. For the need that I have in front of me right now. So where do we begin? Well, you may, you may be aware of 
things going on in your own life or it may happen on the way home. A new need presents itself. And I wonder if maybe the answer here is to ask Jesus in the moment, what would you have me do? What would you do with this person, with this situation right now? Because there's no end to the rationalizations in our minds. But, and it's okay to listen to those things, but it's also important for us to listen to the Spirit. What would you have me do? Right here, right now. We are people of the Spirit, amen? We acknowledge the importance of knowing Scripture. We acknowledge the importance of knowing. But we also acknowledge that God works in our lives through the work of the Holy Spirit. That's what it means to be spirit-led every day. It might even begin in your home today. It might be that for some reason you prior, naturally prioritize the needs of others, but it might be that God is calling you to prioritize the needs of in your own home today, with your spouse, with your kids. I don't know. It might just be that the Spirit will lead you as you ask Him to do so. It might be that God would reshuffle some priorities this morning to Show kindness to the UPS driver that delivers Amazon packages to your door every day. It could be that in a situation where tempers are flaring, that you can be the voice of peace, the voice of reason, the voice of temperance, the voice of logic. We all have different gifts and God is simply asking us to be willing to use them to help that weary traveler on his way. So we can be bridge builders doing our part to bridge the gap, but it takes prayer. It takes being in touch with our surroundings and living in the moment. It might cost us something. It might cost us some time or money or energy or mental real estate. But Jesus does teach us to go the extra mile. And I don't know what that looks like in your life right now, but it's it's a, it's, a, it's a call to all of us to not only know, but to follow through. As I mentioned last week, it's simply too easy to move on from relationships that are difficult or challenging. But there is more to a relationship than two people who are having a conflict going on. And I would just wonder if in those situations, if we would ask Jesus to just help us to know what to do right now, what would happen? Right, right here, right now. I see that in the life of Jesus. When a person would present themselves to him in a moment, Jesus didn't all of a sudden go back and do a review of everything that they had that was wrong and everything that brought them to this place and, and just bring it all and say, well, we got to deal with all this first. He was so good at just living in the moment and saying, okay, 
Your sins are forgiven. Rise and sin no more. This is the blueprint. And the tools available to us are empowered by the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to stand here this morning and say, here's what you do in this situation because I'm not the Holy Spirit. This is simply a a reminder to the invitation given to us by God to be Spirit-led as we walk along in our lives this week. What will Jesus do with this? I don't know. I don't know, but I, I think we'll see some opportunities to build some bridges this week. In closing, Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who, have, who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited and provoking and envying each other. Let's be people of action. Amen. And it's possible that what you would be led to do in a situation is not what I would be led to do. But let's Trust the Spirit to lead us to move beyond some cultural taboos and some barriers, some societal hierarchies, and even move beyond our own biases. And we all have them. Maybe the prayer this morning for you is, Lord, help me see my own biases. We could all pray that. So let's reach out our hand this week in whatever way the Spirit leads us. Now all God's people said, Amen. Let's stand. Lord, we praise you today for always working about the time we get it figured out and feel like we know the law, you stretch us again and you remind us of your priorities. Lord, help us value relationships. Help us value the people, Lord, that you have brought into our lives because you're trusting us to be spirit-led with those with those people that were created in your image and we don't know what that'll we don't know what that'll look like they may be upset with us for a long time or they may be ready to receive either scenario doesn't cancel out our responsibility to be obedient to seek to build a bridge Thank you, Jesus, for being the bridge. Being God on earth. God with skin on. To show us the value of relationships, the value of people, and how far you would go to help others be reconciled to a holy God. Lead us now. Individually, we all have different scenarios, different situations. Lead us as your spirit-led people in Jesus' name. Amen.
sing. I think you know it by heart. Come with me now. If I stumble with the words, you'll help me. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. May God bless you, Spirit-led people. Have a great week building bridges.